if you look at the plow, we looked at the double paddle, we looked at the ribbon and we looked at the tumbling, which kind of summarize uh, the applications and the, uh, you know, uh, the typical uh, characteristics of each of these equipment. So, well, all of these blenders are suitable for free-flowing powders, uh, you know, up to a size of uh, 5,000 microns. When it comes to cohesive powders, well, um, you know, the V blender is avoidable because there is no way to, you know, disintegrate uh, the cohesive forces or break the cohesive forces. Whereas the plow, the double paddle, and the ribbon, these blenders, because of the mixing element, uh, you know, we are able to kind of uh, influence the cohesiveness of the material. Volumetric capacities, you know, the, the double cone blender or the V blender, uh, you know, the entire shell rotates. Uh, there could be limitations in, in terms of the headroom, there could be limitations in terms of the floor space. And typically these kind of blenders are used up to 2 meter cube uh, capacity. Whereas the blenders such as the double paddle, the plow and the uh, ribbons, you know, they could be used up to 50 meter cube uh, bat sizes. Filling ratios, we saw that uh, the plow is best suited for a filling ratio of 30 to 70 percent. The double paddle is good for 40 to 140 percent of the rated capacity. The ribbon, 40 to 70 percent and the tumbling bladder, 50 to 60 percent. Tip speeds, uh, the plows, you know, they cause fluidization of the material, so that's kind of, they run in the highest speed, so about uh, uh, 3 meters per second is, is what we maintain as the tip speed of the plows. The double paddle is about 2 meters per second. The ribbon is about 1.5. And uh, tumbling blenders, you know, they don't function on, on the uh, tip speed. Uh, there are certain other guidelines when we sell, select the speeds of the tumbling blenders. Liquid addition of uh, through spraying, that's possible in all these kinds of blenders. Provision for disintegration of lumps or agglomerates, again, that's possible. The only thing is in the plow, you would have uh, side choppers. In the case of a double paddle, you would have pin mills and choppers. In the case of a tumbling blender, you would have high speed intensifier bars. Degree of particle shear, well, a tumbling blender, uh, you, know, you know, it's kind of the lowest shear when it comes to uh, uh, comparing it with the other uh, convective blenders. Uh, the plow mixer could have a high shear when we are using choppers and uh, double paddle and uh, ribbons have moderate amount of shear. In terms of power, uh, well, uh, ribbon blenders are about 5 to 12 meter cube, uh, kilowatt per meter cube, that's kind of uh, the lowest. Uh, so are the tumbling blenders, uh, less than 10 kilowatt per meter cube, again, depending on the material properties that we have. The highest is the plow with 30 to 40 kilowatt per meter cube, and the double blend paddle blenders, which also run at high speeds, uh, uh, could be higher in terms of the power consumption. Homogeneity of the mix, uh, well the homogeneity in the ribbon generally 90 to 95 percent is, is what is the norm, uh, whereas uh, when it comes to double paddle or the plows uh, we could achieve a homogeneity of up to 98 percent and so in the case of a tumbling blender, mixing mixing time, uh, the double paddle blenders tend to be the fastest when it comes to uh, solid blending in less than a minute we are able to achieve the blending operation. Uh, next is followed by the plows and typically the uh, tumbling blenders or the ribbons would, would take about 15 to 20 minutes uh, for a given product. Product discharge, uh, well the product discharge, uh, the performance of the plow and the ribbon is more or less identical in the plow. Uh, you could still have uh, modified uh, discharge walls and still get closer to 100% discharge. In the ribbon it is generally less, it's about 95 to 97%. In the tumbling blender being a vertical blender configuration, 100% product discharge is possible and in a double paddle blender with the Bombay door design you could still have a 100% discharge. Now there are several factors, we looked at you know kind of the mechanisms of blending, we looked at the mechanisms of segregation, looked at the material characteristics, it could be influenced by cost, it could be influenced by the plant layout concentrations. So with so many factors coming in, it is always advisable that uh, you know taking the basic guideline, you know kind of narrowing down on the choice but uh, taking the uh, view of the manufacturer, taking a view of the you know kind of conducting some lab trials and getting a performance data and then using that for scale up that is generally recommended in the case of uh, solid blending equipment they say solid blending is not just you know a science but is also an art and uh, what we've discussed is the science part of it the art part of it remains you know kind of it's, it's on the experience that we have